Five years ago, it was five nanometers, and now five years later, the Keyring nine zero two zero is seven nanometers. No surprise, really. Five nanometers belongs to others, but Keyring is homegrown. There's only so much you can do with a seven nanometer chip. On the afternoon of September fourth, Huawei hosted the Mate XTS Extraordinary Master, an all scenario product launch at the Shenzhen International Convention and Exhibition Center. This marks the launch of Huawei's second. Triple-fold flagship phone, following the debut of the world's first commercial three-fold device last September. During the event, Huawei executive director and chairman of the consumer business group Yu Chandong revealed that the Mate XTS is powered by the Kirin 9020 chip, built using seven nanometer technology. The phone's 12-core processor is manufactured on SMIC's seven nanometer processor. This means that Huawei's latest phone uses seven nanometer chips, while industry leader TSMC has already begun mass production of two nanometer chips, far ahead of Huawei's older technology. As early as 2020, Huawei had entrusted TSMC to produce five nanometer Kirin 9000 chips. However, when the U.S. added Huawei to its entity list and banned it from cooperating with suppliers using U.S. technology. TSMC stopped supplying Huawei, leaving the company relying on stockpiled chips. As a result, five years later, Huawei is still using outdated seven nanometer technology. Soon after Huawei released its new phone, Apple launched its new iPhone 17 series. The iPhone 17 series uses the Apple A19 chip, which is built using TSMC's three nanometer processor. This means that Huawei's and Apple's phones. Are significantly different in terms of technology. However, there is a stark price difference between the two. The low-end iPhone 17 model starts at 6,000 yuan, while the highest-end iPhone 17 Pro Max 2 terabyte version costs 18,000 yuan. In contrast, Huawei's latest triple-fold phone also starts at 18,000 yuan. In other words, Apple's highest price matches Huawei's lowest price, yet the chip technology is reversed. Despite the low specs of Huawei's new phone, its high price has led to widespread criticism. After seeing Huawei's Mate XTS launch, I'm reminded again of the different levels in this world. Starting at 18,000 yuan, I want to ask, how many months of your salary is that? Some things these days feel like the product's meaning is no longer about the hardware itself, but about treating a select few as special. Even repair technicians have commented on how expensive Huawei phones are. You would consider buying Huawei's new triple-fold phone? Would you consider buying Huawei's new triple-fold phone? No way. Eighteen thousand yuan for the cheapest model? I might as well wait a few days and buy the iPhone 17 instead. People say iPhones are expensive, but compared to Huawei, they still offer good value. Remember when people sold kidneys to buy an iPhone? But Huawei's done even better. Now selling a kidney won't even get you a Huawei. It's true, no transaction, no harm. When asked why he didn't like Huawei phones, this repair technician said he used to like Huawei products, but now the company has gone too far. He recalled how Yu Chandong, before the launch of the Pura X foldable phone, said it was a phone everyone could afford. But when it was released, the price started at seven thousand five hundred yuan. He said, "I looked at my wallet and realized I couldn't afford it." The eighteen thousand yuan for the foldable phone could cover an ordinary person's living expenses for half a year. At the Mate XTS launch, Yu Chengdong introduced the phone as the first in the industry to feature PC version office software and financial software, aimed at enhancing investment decisions. He jokingly called Huawei's three-fold screen the stock market tool, encouraging everyone to use a large screen to monitor the stock market and wishing everyone great profits. A vlogger criticized him for using the stock market as a marketing tool to attract customers, calling it an obvious way to exploit people. Huawei's bold. They publicly endorse this internationally known Myanmar market, shamelessly pushing their stock market tool slogan. Honestly, this isn't simply a pricey phone. It's a stark warning. You're being ripped off. There were even jokes on social media about Yu Chengdong's great profit comment. An ex-user by the name of Asia Finance remarked that last year Huawei's three-fold phone was hyped up at a price of six hundred fifty thousand yuan. A few days ago, 
Yu Chen-dong invited famous Hong Kong actor Andy Lau to promote the phone. Yu referred to the threefold screen as a stock market tool, but ironically, when using Huawei's threefold screen to track the stock market, all A share indices plummeted and have continued to decline since. On September 3rd, the Chinese Communist Party held a military parade, and on September 4th, all three major A share indices fell, with the Growth Enterprise Index leading the decline. The Shanghai Composite Index dropped by 1.3 percent, the Shenzhen Component Index by 2.8 percent, and the Chinex Index by 4.3 percent. Sectors like computing hardware, rare earths, and military industries saw the largest losses. On September 9th, the A share market shrank again. With all three indices dropping, and the Growth Enterprise Index fell more than three percent in the afternoon. Not only did the price and stock market promotion slogans frustrate users, but the price drop of previous phones after the new phones release angered middlemen. The XTS has been released, and now these foldable phones are practically worthless. I'm going to lose tens of thousands on this batch of stock. When it comes to Huawei's threefold phone. Aside from the complaints mentioned earlier, users have pointed out other issues, such as the screen being fragile, the cost of screen replacement being high, and difficulties with after-sales maintenance. Don't buy the Huawei Triple Fold. I know so many people who've bought it and it's shattered. Look, I just dropped mine lightly and now it's cracked. The worst part: after it breaks, it stops working. It won't even open the screen. Replacing it costs five thousand yuan. It's not that I can't afford it, but if I drop it again, it's over. So many of my friends have had the same problem. Huawei explained this to me. Why is it so expensive to replace a screen? Is it just to get us to spend that eight thousand yuan? You say three折叠怎么折都有面。You say the triple fold phone can fold however it wants, but do you know how much it costs to fix one of those screens? Look at this example. Just a little bump here, and it leaked. Huawei won't cover it under warranty, but they offer a discounted screen replacement for four thousand yuan. This one's water damaged and won't even turn on. Everyone keeps saying Huawei is great, but when you open it up, you really wonder what's so great about it. It's just a mess. A Huawei customer revealed that their phone suddenly malfunctioned with an unresponsive touchscreen and a big lump inside the screen requiring repairs. However, the customer service said it couldn't be repaired due to an apparent dent in the phone's center axis. The customer responded, "If the axis of the threefold phone doesn't have a dent, how would you fold it?" Even the famous Chinese influencer Hu Chenfeng criticized Huawei's threefold phone in a live stream with fans. Why am I even folding it? Fold, fold, fold. It works fine normally. I'm not against innovation, not at all. Just make sure it's useful. What's the point of folding it? Why turn a perfectly good straight screen phone into something you fold and flip? What's the point of all these folds? When a user said that Huawei caters to wealthy customers, Hu Chengfeng disagreed, stating that the wealthy people he knows mostly use Apple phones, and very few, if any, use foldable phones. An IT professional from Guangdong, Wei Zuguang, listed the top ten pitfalls of Huawei's threefold phone. It's already seriously affecting my work and life. If it didn't have such a huge impact, I honestly wouldn't want to share this. Wei Zuguang highlighted several issues. One, there were quality control problems, including leakage and dead pixels. Repair staff revealed that such issues are common with Huawei phones. Two, there were problems with the phone's calling function, as it would randomly disconnect calls. Three, when using headphones, the phone often switched to loudspeaker mode unexpectedly. Four, the camera had issues. With photos appearing blank, even though they seem fine when taken. Five, the phone's search function was unreliable, often returning blank results when searching via the browser or WeChat. Six, Huawei phones had trouble making international calls, and apps from overseas couldn't be downloaded. Essentially, Huawei phones became useless when abroad. Seven, the phone screen would often jump during scrolling, moving unpredictably between screens. Eight. The camera's verification system frequently failed to work. Nine. The social media sharing feature was problematic, as even after clicking share, messages wouldn't be received in the chat window. Ten. There were numerous issues when using WeChat, including lost records and messages after switching screens. Despite these issues, Huawei continues to confidently urge consumers to buy their products and even push for support 
because it's a domestic company. However, with the U.S. sanctions in place and the ongoing slump in China's consumer market, Huawei's market share has been on the decline. A September 2nd report by Nikkei Asia revealed that after surveying the market share of the top five companies in 71 global product categories, Chinese firms saw a decline in 15 categories. In the cloud service sector, Alibaba, ranked fourth, saw its market share drop by 0.7 percentage points, while Huawei, ranked fifth, also experienced a decline. PwC senior economist Naotaka Sonoda pointed out that, due to income and economic conditions, Chinese consumers have shifted towards buying only what they need and in smaller quantities. According to market data, Huawei's share of the Chinese cloud services market stands at just 18%, a significant gap compared to industry leader Alibaba Cloud at 33%. Furthermore, Huawei's profitability continues to be questioned. At the same time, Huawei's profits have plummeted. According to Huawei Investment Holdings' latest mid-year financial report for 2025, revenue grew slightly to 427 billion yuan, but net profit dropped by 32% year-over-year to 37.2 billion yuan. What's even more concerning is that, by the end of June, Huawei's total debt had risen to 712 billion yuan. Huawei attributed the profit decline to multiple factors, including increased R&D investment, strategic spending, and external environmental changes. The financial report also showed that Huawei's operating costs grew by 9.3%, significantly outpacing the 4% growth in revenue, reflecting increasing cost pressures. Additionally, the company reported a major loss of 5.8 billion yuan in fair value changes, further squeezing its profit margins due to rising supply chain costs and higher internal management expenses. With the US-China trade war in the background, Huawei is facing serious allegations internationally. In 2019, the US government imposed sweeping sanctions on Huawei, restricting its ability to work with American companies. Then in 2022, the Federal Communications Commission FCC banned Huawei devices from being sold or imported into the US, citing national security concerns. In July 2025, US District Court Judge Ann Donnelly denied Huawei's request to dismiss 13 criminal charges, meaning the company will still face federal charges, including theft of trade secrets. In a 52-page ruling, prosecutors presented sufficient evidence to charge Huawei with 16 offenses, including expanding its business through illegal means, stealing trade secrets from six U.S. companies, engaging in racketeering, and committing bank fraud. Huawei is accused of using a Hong Kong shell company, Skycom, to conduct over 100 million U.S. dollars worth of illegal transactions with Iran and using the U.S. financial system to conceal its role as a subsidiary of Huawei in Iran, constituting bank fraud. The case is set to begin trial on May 4, 2026, and is expected to last several months. This case dates back to 2018, during President Donald Trump's first term, when the U.S. Department of Justice launched the China Initiative to counter China's theft of intellectual property. Huawei's chief financial officer, Meng Wanzhou, the daughter of Huawei founder Reng Zhengfei, was also one of the defendants. She was detained in Canada for nearly three years, starting in late 2018, and returned to China in 2021, after the U.S. dropped its charges against her. However, the end of Meng Wanzhou's case does not affect the ongoing criminal lawsuit against Huawei. In addition to the court ruling, U.S. lawmakers have urged the Trump administration to collaborate with allies and partners to prevent Huawei's Harmony OS from spreading globally, as it could potentially be used by the Chinese government for espionage. In May of this year, lawmakers wrote to U.S. Secretary of State Marco Rubio, Commerce Secretary Howard Lutnick, and FCC Chairman Brendan Carr, noting that Harmony OS is not only used in smartphones, tablets, and computers, but also in connected cars and other smart devices. For example, Toyota's BZ7 electric sedan, launched for the Chinese market, uses Harmony OS for its smart cockpit system, enabling touch control of windows, air conditioning, seats, and other functions. Lawmakers warn that if future updates or patches to the operating system contain hidden data collection backdoors, these devices could be used for espionage. Huawei is a major tech company strongly supported by the Chinese government, so considering it is required under Chinese law to support assist, and cooperate with national intelligence work, its equipment could potentially be used in cyber attacks. The lawmakers emphasize 
that due to the serious national security and geopolitical implications of foreign operating systems, Harmony OS must be thoroughly reviewed. Huawei faces both U.S. sanctions internationally and a shrinking market domestically due to the broader economic downturn. These challenges will continue to severely impact the company, even with frequent new product launches, its future remains uncertain.